Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, changing the oil in the Adcock Shipley horizontal mill. Unfortunately, it's not in the best shape ever. I find some surprises, you'll see some metal and I run into some other issues that are pretty serious depending on who you ask, but I think, well, you'll see. Also, I try my hand at laying block, some CMU, some cinder block for the first time. It turned out okay, you'll see. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. So I have yet to hear this little Adcock Shipley horizontal mill run, but before I run it, I want to change the oil in the headstock. Let's drain what oil's in there. We know that there's some in there from videos back where I took the drain plug out and some oil come out. I just don't know how much. I know it's not clean. And I know it hasn't been changed in a while because the oil plugs were painted over. So let's drain it out, flush it out, change it, and see if this thing will run. I'm curious. So here's the oil sight glass. It appears that it has oil level in it, but that just could be a stain. Um, here's the drain plug, which like so many other pieces of equipment is poorly placed. And uh, there's almost no way to get oil out of this thing without it getting all over the machine. But I think I've got a solution to this problem. Let me show you the type of funnel that I'm gonna use. Some of you probably haven't seen it before. And I think it's pretty neat. Hopefully it'll be the solution here. So here's a funnel I bet most of you have never seen. It's called a Forma Funnel. I picked this up from McMaster Car. It's made in the USA. I think it's just a piece of silicone with a thin sheet of a really bendable either tin or aluminum on the inside. And you just form it into the shape you want. And, uh, you know, it's fairly flexible so you can kind of smash it up to the part you're working on and hopefully get the oil out of oil or whatever out of uh, the equipment without it getting everywhere. So let's try it and see if it works. These are neat. I had to have one when I seen it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hold this on there like that. Hopefully that will catch it and it will drain down into the pan. I'm going to move this fill plug. Hopefully let it breathe maybe. Drain a little better. It is working. Well, that's not a good sign at all. It's got quite a bit of metal in here. I expect some out of a gearbox, especially a gearbox that doesn't have a filter or anything. You know, all the debris is supposed to settle to the bottom, but that's a pretty good chunk right there. We'll have to take off this cover and get a good look. The oil in this thing just completely filthy. You know, it had, definitely hadn't had regular oil changes. But let's take this cover off if we can and see if we can get our eyes in there. See what everything looks like. So let's shine some light in here together. First light in this box, I'm sure, probably since it was originally assembled. Wow, it's got a lot. Look at this. That's sludge from not changing your oil. A lot of metal debris. A lot of fine stuff. I don't know where that one chunk come from. Hmm. Well, probably maybe from there. Maybe get a good look over all these but I mean I'm seeing common gearbox wear. I expect metal in these old straight tooth gearboxes to get to in the bottom and I mean just when somebody tries to change gears while they're running I mean stuff like that it doesn't look as bad as what I was expecting 
but it's filthy dirty. These straight tooth gears get really sharp little burrs on them. And all that shreds off and goes down to the bottom of the oil uh, reservoir. That's pretty common. I don't think there's no surprise there with the age of this thing. Let me get a good look over this and then we'll clean this out. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you in on any damage that I find. So because someone will ask, this is a sure shot, that's what the can's called. You can put about any liquid you want in here and pressurize it, and it becomes just a pressurized spray. In this I have diesel fuel. a lot better. So I'll admit, when I seen all that metal coming out of this gearbox, I thought this thing was going to be trash. But it's not. I'm pleasantly surprised. I've looked over all the gear teeth, other than some damage on uh, this gear right here, this little gear. But it's just where people have tried to change it when it's running and it's ground against this uh, this large bull gear here. But you know, that'll last forever the way that it is if it's taken care of at all. like to get this out if I can without damaging it. <gasps> Dang it! I'm tearing this thing to pieces. Peanuts over here, want something to eat. Come on, get some nuts over here. And I am breaking it. I 
can't handle it though. This old sight glass is so hard. So brittle. That outer edge is coming off of it. There it goes, finally. I think I can probably save it. We'll make a new one. I didn't do that any favors. So that sight glass has an O-ring on it. I chipped it up around that edge, just so fragile. I'll clean that up a bit and see if I can't use it. So here's a look at the gear cover and changing mechanism. It's all one unit cast over in the, well the whole machine is over in the UK by our friends over there. The two silicon bronze shoes that uh, made up with gears, with the two gears in there. The gears have a raised ring on them that slides in that slot and then just by moving this back and forth it shifts those two gears around this thing just has high and low, so pretty simple. But heavy built. It's nice. If I can get this thing lined back up, it won't be easy. And I feel a lot better about this thing now. It's a question of whether it was any good or not. So this is a mobile DTE heavy medium is the oil. About 900 milliliters. So if that doesn't want to make you change the oil in your old neglected equipment, then you're just a bad person. So I just got done temporarily wiring this thing up. I have not tried it yet. I'm interested to see if it will run. I'm glad that the oil's clean and changed in it now. And one good thing about this is that it takes so little oil, I can change it a few times and make sure that it's flushed out. You know, 900 milliliters is 
not that much so not much compared to all the other machines that I got that take gallons let me go turn on the phase converter flip the breaker box on the side of this and hopefully when I push this button this will come alive with no smoke involved that's what I'm hoping So she is alive. Let me turn on this breaker. Check that out. Doesn't sound bad. And the electronics work on it. I'm going to change it into high and see what that uh, does. And it sounds good. Maybe a little roaring down in the bottom. It may need motor bearings. That's easy though. Got that what they call it actually loose in it. Back to low. So considering all that's happening, it's pretty quiet actually. There's a mobile, the Vactra oil heavy medium. The bearings and gears. It's nice. Good to see it alive. At least partially. Next time we get a chance, we'll wire up all the electronic uh, control that electric motor that controls the feed on the table we'll try that and see if it works that's pretty suspect to me but who knows it may be just fine so on further review of the footage that I shot I went back and watched it when you know just for you two seconds ago but for me a day ago uh, running this thing I noticed that I only heard the bad bearing noise when I ran the spindle of this machine at on high. Well, that pretty much tells me that it's not the motor that I suspected that it was originally. It's actually the spindle that's got a bad bearing. But standing in front of this machine, the bearing noise sounds as if it's coming from the base and not from the spindle. But pinpointing a noise on a piece of equipment that makes all kinds of noise is kind of tough sometimes. Mechanics or technicians, engineers can probably all agree with that. Sometimes it's tough to see or to hear where a noise is coming from to pinpoint its location. But walking out here, putting the spindle in neutral, turning it over by hand, it's definitely a bad bearing in the spindle. And given this machine's history, it had a jig on it that only relied on the spindle to do the work, so who knows how long it ran. Plus the condition of the oil doesn't surprise me that, uh, you know, the spindle bearings are bad. Hopefully they're not that expensive. I don't think they'll be hard to change on this pretty basic machine, but we'll see. But before I do that, I want to check the rest of the you know, mechanics on this, make sure it doesn't need anything else before I go invest in anything. But I do believe this machine's worth it, depending on how much the spindle bearings are. We'll see, but look forward to that a spindle bearing change. So a part of me has always admired the stonemason, especially the guy who could take rough field stone and turn it into a beautiful rock wall that lasts hundreds of years and you know the rocks are all random and this guy has so much experience that he can make them lay together like they were designed to fit. I've always been impressed with that. 
And I didn't go back block on this building simply because it was the easy, cheap, or fast way. I did it because I think block is probably a more long-term material versus lumber, and I just like it better. That's the simple, and plus I had it, right? The rest of the building's block, but you could sheet metal this whole building, do this in wood, nobody would ever know the difference. I just wanted block. I also want to learn to lay some block. Not that I'm going to lay all this block because it would take me forever, but I at least want to get my hands dirty and lay some block and have a little bit of experience doing it. So I've laid out a, out a line here. I've got some of the rougher block out of my stack, and I'm going to try to run three courses of block here. I've done a little research. Hopefully it'll pay off. So here's the mortar I'm going to try to use. This is a uh, Type S, so structural mortar. It's just a pre-mixed bag of lime, probably lime. Uh, it could be fire clay, but I'm assuming lime, um, sand, and cement. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that stacking blocks in a line is not the hard part uh, when it comes to laying blocks. And the skill, or at least a lot of it, is in handling the mortar, getting to go where you want consistently, you know, getting trying to get repeatable results. What I've seen is they suggested just handling the mortar, like on the board, as I'm doing right now, getting used to laying it out. And, uh, you know, just getting the feel for it, because that's where you know, you're going to fail at. That's where I'm going to fail at, I'm sure, is just handling this stuff. So this is absolutely not a tutorial. Um, this is just my sec actually my second attempt uh, at laying a little bit of block. So that's my first end. So I'm going to go to the other end and set up the same thing. Right on the money. So when it came to laying blocks, all I'd known about block work is what I had watched on a couple tutorial videos and 
really getting in here and physically doing it, I learned so much more of just the small details involved in just making it work. And, you know, if a person wanted to try it, all you'd have to buy is a couple bags of mortar and a few blocks, and you can practice all day long. And in my opinion, it was well worth it. I enjoyed it. I hate to pick it up again. So these are string blocks. This is a set that Marshalltown sent me, and all they do is hold a string line up against a block or brickwork. This is a set that I built probably 10 years ago when I bought this property in preparation for maybe one day fixing this thing by myself. And the majority of this was I wanted something to make, but I still have them. They're a good little project. Here's an old commercial one that I found, just a single. Uh, it says Bricksmith on it, probably older than I am. But uh, that would be a neat little thing for somebody to do if they wanted a quick project to make. There's some nice wood. floors on level as well, which is giving me a hard time. a little off level. Not bad enough to where I can't recover. Not absolutely horrible for a second attempt.
more is getting a little stiff. I think it is anyway. So that is my fourth row of block I've ever laid. I laid one row just messing around uh, the other day. And I'm happy with the way that that turned out. I haven't tried to clean up these joints yet, but as far as its straightness, its level, you know, it, 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 it being level, not too bad. Not as bad as I thought, let's just say that. <laughs> it's obviously not good. It took me four times longer than it would take anybody with real experience. So there is some mistakes in here. I got that a little off, but it's not that bad. I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with the way it's turned out, considering I'm going to lay block. So what do you think of my block wall, Peanut? Does it meet your standards? So the good thing about mortar is that it doesn't set really all that fast. I'm just cleaning off these blocks with a water hose. You could do that over and over. I wouldn't obviously lay too many blocks. Your stuff, the mortar will harden too hard, but a few runs. I don't see why anybody couldn't do that. Alright guys, that's it. That's all I have time for this week. Hopefully we can get the bearings sorted out on that little Adcock Shipley mill. And my thoughts are we can just go with a good quality set of bearings, precision bearings on it, and not go crazy with super precision stuff because I don't think it's needed on a mill like that. At least not for my needs, anyway, uh, that I can see in the future using that thing. We'll, we'll just play it by ear, see what I can get, and uh, the prices that uh, I can get it for. Hopefully I'll have concrete soon. I'm on the rain list of one of the local contractors, which means my building is under roof, so when it rains they can work out here. I'm finding that all of our local contractors are listed up for months, which is the opposite of what I hear others saying. Their contractors are twiddling their thumbs and ours are busier than they've ever been. Which, you know, I guess it's better to be on a rain list than on no list, but given our past weather patterns, uh, that could be, they could call me any minute, because it rains all the time here. So. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Anybody who supported me on this project, I definitely appreciate it. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Little squirrel. Come on. So while I was editing the footage that I just shot of this mill running it, I noticed that it only made the bearing noise. Little squirrel. That turd shooting out of your butt. Come on, you're gonna get oily. Come on. <laughs>